I'm here at the Centre for Mathematical Sciences in Cambridge at the University of Cambridge with um, Professor Frank Kelly. So thank you very much, Frank, for coming in and talking to us today. It's a pleasure. I have just a few questions. Um, so I just wanted to start by asking you to tell us what it is that you work on. So, right, so I, I work on uh, trying to develop mathematical models and theories for large scale networks of one type or another. So trying to understand phenomena that occur in things like telephony networks or the internet or large scale networks of road traffic, for example. Oh, thank you. And can you tell us what is it that you like about mathematics? Um, well, I suppose the, f the thing that first attracted me to mathematics and that I've continued to like has been just the combination of elegance and simplicity, just to be able to um, represent some phenomenon that occurs in the world or some object you see in the world that, that looks kind of complicated and difficult to describe. And then somehow a mathematical idea or concept lets you describe it in a very simple and elegant way. Brilliant. Do you have an example? Um, well, I suppose when I was at school, I can remember kind of being uh, really, really impressed when I first uh, understood that, uh, for example, when you, when you were throwing an object, a heavy object, that um, if you analysed its motion, that the curve it sketched out was a parabola. And I thought that was just, just amazing. It was just interesting to see that a beautiful shape like a parabola could be related to phenomena that occurred in the real world, like a projectile. Fantastic, thank you. Can you tell us, you've told us about something that a moment at school when, when suddenly you realised the connection between mathematics and a natural event. Do you have any other favourite mathematical moments that um, you remember? Well, I suppose in my own work, um, I remember thinking you know, very hard uh, some years ago about um, some of the congestion phenomena that occur in the internet. You know, the, the internet's got lots and lots of packets that are going from one place to another carrying information. And sometimes within the network there are uh, uh, difficult phenomena that occur, uh, sometimes called congestion or congestion collapse. The system may stop working even. And trying to understand why and when that happens um, looked like a kind of it is a really difficult problem, but every now and again people make advances. They kind of comprehend that there's a, uh, a simple way to describe certain phenomena and that when you see the right way to, to describe it, lots of other things follow from it. And so it gives you a way of understanding what's going on um, at a high level, a kind of conceptual level, rather than having to, to look at lots and lots of examples. I mean, I suppose um, historically the analogy that comes to mind is that um, when the Romans started to build arches and bridges, aqueducts, things like that, um, when you see these structures now, they look amazing. How did they do it? But of course, the ones we see are the ones that stayed up. They, they built lots that fell down. And it was, to begin with, experimental. They were building arches with um, bricks of certain sizes and certain shapes. And gradually, over time, they realized what it was that worked and didn't work and developed the concepts that allowed them to be more likely to build a bridge that stayed up. Fantastic. So, so I think in many of the technological networks that we're constructing today, uh, we're at the same stage as the Romans. We're doing it often by trial and error, not quite understanding why certain things work and other things don't work. And that as we gradually begin to understand it, we'll get better at designing the networks. That's really interesting because it links to um, something that we've been exploring about the importance sometimes of mistakes, that mistakes aren't always bad, they're part of the learning process. Is that something that you feel? Do you feel Oh, mistakes? absolutely. I mean, when you're trying to solve a problem, um, you know, most of the things you try don't work. Uh, but what you hope to do is that trying to understand why it didn't work, what is it that this way of trying to solve the problem is missing, trying to understand what's gone wrong, may give you a clue as to what another route would be. Marvellous. And that links into what I was going to ask you next, which is about creativity. Mathematics is, is um, often not seen as the creative subject that I think many mathematicians think it is. Do you think creativity is important in mathematics? Oh, I th uh, very, very. I mean, um, one's trying to solve a problem. Um, 
generally, if one's stuck on the problem, it's because one's stuck in a rut. One's looking at it the same way again and again, or one's looking at it, if it's a new problem, one's looking at it, uh, if it's an unsolved problem, one's looking at it in ways that other people have tried and failed to solve it. So what you have to do is come at it a different way, think up some completely different way of coming at it. And that sometimes means um, not consciously thinking about it, kind of trying to understand the problem as well as you can, to, to, to have learned everything you can about it. Uh, but quite often I'll go away then and not, not consciously think about the problem for a week or a month or something. And then perhaps just out of the blue there comes an idea that if I look at it a different way I might be able to get somewhere. But you have to kind of be well prepared for that. You have to have thought hard about the problem and understood all its aspects before you can kind of wait for the bolt from the blue. <laughs> of course. And do you have any example of, of when that has been something that's happened to you? Well, so. um, yeah, I mean, several times I've been, been stuck on problems. And one thing I find is that thinking quite hard about other things often helps. Um, so sometimes when I'm in a seminar on a completely different topic from the one that I'm working on, um, I'll listen to the seminar and some way of coming at the problem of the seminar, um, uh, it may be nothing to do with the mathematical technique used, it may just be uh, a kind of level of scale, you know, you look at it at a larger scale or a smaller scale over a longer time period or a shorter time period, or you look at it from different points of view, of different, um, you know, within networks there are lots and lots of different intelligences interacting, so maybe one should look at it from the point of view, a different point of view, how does this look for the for the PC? How does it look for the router in the network? How does it look from the point of view of a packet going through the network? Kind of um, uh, trying to think of things in a completely different way. And sometimes hearing someone's seminar um, is enough to provoke that thought about a problem that's completely different. Frank, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. That was fascinating. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Julia.